Greetings, Notary Stars. We are at our 13th video on how to cl complete a buyer's or a purchase transaction. Uh, we are at the Uniform Residential Loan Application, also known as the 1003. Um, one of the biggest things that I can look back over my career as a signing agent, I remember the first time that I got a call from an escrow officer uh, overstepping the signing agency, and they asked me, can you look at the 1003 and make sure you have this? And I, I thought, what is the 1003? Uh, so I always like to point that out, the lingo uh, that are used about these documents. Uh, so the application, the Uniform Residential Loan application, is often referred to as the 1003. Um, one thing that I want to point out from the very beginning is that on the residential loan application, if there is only one signer on the transaction, um, then no one signs it at the top because it is only signed if by both parties at the top of the loan application if it is a joint application. This brings me to another point. I see signing agents sometimes not understanding when someone is on the note and when someone is on the deed. Uh, you have to become very familiar that uh, one signer can be on the note and both signers can be on the deed. This means that one party was used to secure the note and that uh, two people will technically own the home. Um, you, you've got to be able to learn which documents will require both signatures. In this particular video, Bradley W. Cooper <clears throat> is the only purchaser and he is the only one listed on the loan application. You can find out very quickly and you should always check if there's two signers involved. Um, and never assume that people are always married. Um, you can check here if people are listed on their own loan application or listed as a joint, and then decide if they're gonna sign. So I wrote stop and think here where the signature line goes at the top because this is somewhere that you need to stop and think and look down below and see, hmm, well Bradley's on this by himself, so he's the only one who's gonna sign it. The loan application can provide you with a tremendous amount of information. This one is blank, uh, other than Bradley Cooper's name being filled in. Uh, I always ask the borrowers to kind of review their loan application and let them know that it is the first thing that the loan officer or the loan company puts together. And if information has changed slightly, um, that is not you know supplying false, false information. There are people who can go through the loan process for up to six months and their balances that they pay on credit cards and things like that may come down. So they're not you know, providing false information. That's what happened at the beginning of the loan process. Um, I asked the signers to kind of look at it. If there's several mistakes, you might want to reach out to the loan officer. Uh, this is a lender document, so you would want to reach out to their loan officer. Um, and then always 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 check the bottom of your loan application to make sure if there's any initials or not this particular package we're using for training does not have them i have seen them where they have them at the bottom and then on the next page there's initial marks um, because there's no signature involved and then i've seen them uh, where they're on every single page so you really have to um, make sure that you're looking for that also, for most loan applications, there are three signatures, one at the top, one on page three, and one on the final page. Now, I want to point something out. I have seen them where they only have uh, two signatures, and I have seen them where they have six or seven signatures. Rule of thumb is that you're always looking for these three basic signatures, and then if you see less than three, really double check that there's no initials. Um, and this is not a document you can be on autopilot about. None of them are really, but you wanna make sure you're looking for the right information. So again, they sign at the top of the loan application if they're applying for joint credit. I personally have them sign the top regardless, uh, just because it's best practice. Um, and I've never gotten in trouble for that. Uh, and then on this next page here, the acknowledgement and agreement, they always have to sign and date this document. So the first signature is not dated, so they do not put a date here, but then they do sign and date under the acknowledgement and agreement about their loan application. And then on the third page, they're gonna sign and date. 
These are very common errors for signing agents. So you want to make sure that you're not one of the ones who misses the signatures and initials on loan applications. It is because they're all different from different lenders. It can really trip you up. So you want to make sure you're using your eagle eye when filling out this uh, filling out this document.